Hi, good evening. My name is Jay Rothman. I am the host of the show. Welcome to Real Men, Real Talk Live. Welcome back to the studio. Again, my name is Jay Roth, but I'm the host of the show. I want to welcome all of my co-hosts this evening to episode number 100. Woohoo! Yeah, In the house yeah, this evening. We have, 100! We have, we have a special guest joining us this evening, representing the feminine divine, Rachel Fiore, known as a mystical therapist coming in from San Diego, California. Welcome to Real Men Real Talk Live this evening, Rachel Fiore. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And congratulations on 100, gentlemen. That's such a milestone. Yeah. That's so exciting. We have Evis Love Heat, the man of the land from out, down under. He calls Australia home. Welcome, Evis Love. As always, brothers and our sister. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on the show. We have Josh Richard Hot coming in off of uh, his trip to Colorado. Welcome back to Southern California, Josh Richard. Mm, good to be home. It's so grateful to be sharing space with you guys. Mm. And, and of guys. course, we, we have Mr. Jeff Pistano <laughs> also coming in hot off his Kickstarter campaign to uh, release his book, Americana Portrait Sessions. Jeff Pisano coming in from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome back, ja Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you, Jay. I still remember show number one. Well, what was that, Jeff? <laughs> what was that show, my brother? <laughs> it, it really wasn't show number one per se. Uh, yeah. It, it was um, when Jay asked us to do his show and he said, I remember him coming to me and, and, and uh, saying, would you want to do come on my show with two other guys? And then we did that show and I knew right then and there we had something. Mm. And I said it afterwards. I got. I, I remember saying that after. I, I, I immediately felt the the soul connection with the four of us. Beautiful, mm. beautiful. Well, bringing us back to episode number one hundred. As we welcome our viewers and listeners, if you're joining us live on one of our three platforms, LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live, we invite you to light us up if you should hear something that you like or love with your love button on your monitor. Light us up. If you should uh, be uh, inspired to drop a comment or ask a question, we'll do our best to uh, answer as many questions that we are able to pick up on the live stream as possible. If you're picking us up on replay on your health network, coming in through Roku TV or Amazon Fire TV, welcome to Real Men Real Talk, episode number 100. Tonight's episode is special to us, not only because we're here to honor um, and celebrate a milestone for us hitting number 100, which is a big deal in the podcast community. We are also so uh, honored to have Rachel Fiore join us. Coming in uh, as a mystical therapist, she picked tonight's topic in our meet and greet production meeting a week or so ago. Tonight's topic is weak people don't heal, warriors do. And so Rachel, that's really a, almost, a, almost has somewhat of an underlying controversial tone to it. And so I want to open it up and invite you to uh, kind of kick us off tonight and share with us, what does that title mean to you? Weak people don't heal, warriors do. And why was this uh, topic so dear to your heart that you wanted to come in with it tonight on Real Men Real Talk Live? Yeah, thank you. This is very near and dear to my heart. I love this. Weak people don't heal, warriors do. That is truth. And what does it mean, though? We don't want to misinterpret it. What does that mean? It means that it takes a warrior to go inside of their pain instead of run from their pain. And what we learn, what we have been taught growing up is to cope, use a strategy, use a method, do the retreat, look outside of ourselves, and then we'll make the pain go away. That's not a warrior. It's not by our 
It's not our fault. It is by default that we've learned to stay and show up as weakness. We've not learned what power really is. Power means, a warrior means, I can go inside of my pain when I am triggered, when my emotional pain is activated, when my trauma shows up in my body, I will go inside of that pain and I will love it so powerfully, so fully with validation and acceptance that it has no choice but to alchemize. That process is very uncomfortable. That's why it takes a warrior. Mm. Ooh, I think we've just had the show, Jay Rothman. I, At the yeah. 100th. <laughs> and, and what, what did you hear in that statement right there from Rachel? Can you break down yeah. what you heard there? Damn, sister, that was already probably 100 shows deep for us. Uh, pretty much a, a lot of what we've already you know, shared with a lot of our community. I just want to say a quick personal thanks before I go in a little bit deeper uh, to our viewers that have come in from Rachel's angle as well. So thanks uh, any of our brothers and sisters out there that have come in from Rachel's community. Welcome to the family. And for our brothers and sisters from here on the other side of the pond, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us all the way up to this 100th show. We're excited to celebrate going in deep on Warriors Do Heal. And for me, what the sister is saying there, you know, so much of this journey, I put my hand up, man, and, you know, we're, we're 100 shows, as we know, in deep, that all of us here on at Real Men Real Talk Live, we've talked about our trauma. We've talked about our abuse. We've talked about our darkness. We've talked about our shadows. So these very first steps of being able to become that warrior of light for within each all of us is to really visit and go into that dark. Now, what that dark may seem for one individual may seem a little bit different from another individual. Your trauma may not be the same as someone else's trauma. But we all have this subjective look at what it may mean to be weak within our lives, what it may mean to have strength or to become a warrior. The thing for me, brothers and sisters, and, you know, on my journey, when I had to go into that shadow self of myself, why I was, you know, building the armor around myself to protect myself, to keep myself feeling safe, to keep myself feeling secure, was to really learn why I wanted to do that in the world and what programs I was running. I came to learn that a lot of those programs that I was running, they weren't even my own. They were passed down to me. They were handed down to me. But see, the mm. beautiful thing, and like our sister's saying in there, what's happening on this planet, and you know, I'd go far as back probably about to 2015, is that we are receiving the upgrades, brothers and sisters, we all have this potential to become that warrior of light from within. So what we're going to discuss, I guess, here tonight, not only on our personal journey, how we've been using our tools to be able to walk into these shadows or that dark night of the soul and be able to realize our own light in those shadows, but also to share some vulnerability in the stories that have really given us the power to be the warrior within our own lives. So, look, I'm really looking forward to sharing a little bit more with the sister and, and hearing a lot more from her perspective of what weakness means, sister. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So here's, I think we've learned how to be weak and what that means is to run from our pain, to hide it, to suppress it, to repress it, to avoid it. And none of that, none of that is powerful. It keeps us weak because it means if I can't handle pain, am I powerful or am I weak? It being a warrior of light means to go into the darkness and illuminate it from the inside out. It's not mm -hmm. stay in the light all the time. How are you going to transmute darkness, pain, unhealed traumas if you're running from it, right? Weakness is not an insult. It's something we've learned to become. It's how we show up. Because we don't know what power really means. We use force instead of power. I want to heal us. I want this to go away. That's not love. Welcome, darkness. Welcome, ugly, horrible trait that I've been gifted generously by the people who raised me. And it makes me show up as a shitty person in relationships. Welcome. I'm going to love you to the point that you have no choice but to alchemize and no longer be a part of how I show up in the world that's what a warrior does. That's divine power. And that's what we're learning how to become. 
You nailed it, Rachel. And that was Ev and Rachel. When both of you were talking, I was I was reflecting back on um, when I started to get this, and because I too I thought the warrior meant you could, you had the ability to tolerate pain and take it and stuff it down and just bottle that up and internalize it. I thought it was my ability to withstand pain. And I thought weakness was talking about it, sharing with my friends, exposing it, um, yes. exposing those fears and all of that. And so I had it completely backwards and it's, <clears throat> It doesn't feel like warrior's work at first. It feels dirty, sticky, messy, bumpy, awkward, strange uh, to be able to sit with some of these emotions for the first time ever um, feels really weird and it feels uncomfortable. And it's it doesn't it's so funny because I thought this picture of like a warrior would, would be this, you know, man in armor on this battlefield that's willing to just withstand hits and take hit after hit and deflect to arrows. It's not, it's this soft part of ourselves. It's turning inward. It's, it's loving those, those hurt soft parts. And it doesn't feel very strong to do this at first. And it doesn't, uh -uh. you feel very vulnerable and you feel very um, exposed, but, when we are able to be in that place over and over and over again and learn to trust that and learn to trust ourselves in that space and that we are able to honor and protect and be with that, be with those old pains, be with those old hurts, the stuff we wanted to run from, um, that's when we start to slowly recognize that we can sit with it and that we're okay and that it's not necessarily something we need to run, hide, bottle, stuff, shame, um, and push down anymore. And just, just the ability to be able to sit with it is power, is strength, is courage. And that's the warrior. And it starts out small and it starts out really simple, but just even sitting with it, sitting next to the pain and just saying, I'm here. And we're just going to sit here and that's okay is the most beautiful start to an incredible journey of being a warrior. Beautiful. So Josh, I'm going to put you in a hot seat. Let's do it. When, was the, up. when was the pivot for you? When did you go from being a weak survivor to a strong thriving warrior? When was that moment that you understood that you needed to pivot or shift. Do you have do you recall that moment? The moment I was first able to even consider sitting with it was my it was my third time to rehab. And I had just almost committed suicide the week prior. Um, and I knew that I wasn't gonna survive another one because I had crossed that threshold. Okay. I had considered jumping. And if it got bad, that bad again, I probably wouldn't make it. And um, so I knew I had to do everything differently. And that meant everything, A to Z. Okay. And so sitting with, sitting with this stuff that caused me so much pain for the first time ever was and it didn't feel again it didn't feel like a beginning but it was it was the most beautiful beginning um mm. and it seems very simple and it seems ugly and it there's there is still judgment and shame there and you got to sit with that too and that's okay and um but yeah it's it's so it's a slow process from that point but just deciding to sit with it is the start you got to start. thank you for sharing it yeah. if you've been a good listener man i've got a question for you straight up mr fasano we're talking about sitting with these beautiful emotions particularly you know us as men you know which has been very hard for many men on the journey how long does a brother know 
that it's been too long sitting with some of these things that have happened within his life that have caused mm-hmm. him pain? Good mm. question. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, hmm. Don't think about it, man. Let it come from within the heart space. Actually, there are two answers to that. <laughs> All right. Mm. There are two answers to that. The answer is, to me, most men never know. They just, they, most men never, ever know. It'll take somebody doing their best to point it out to them. Powerful. Most men will never really know based upon what men have been taught and what they have learned. They just won't know. And and their behaviors escalate, their toxic behaviors escalate. The, um, I have to be the tough guy, as Josh was saying, I've got to be the tough guy. I've got to be this and, and, you know, far be it to feel my feelings, but that's even a stretch. Even Mm -hmm. saying to some, uh, somebody, uh, um, somebody who's in it and I'm sure there's, Plenty of women are out there. Um, so what are you feeling right now? They have no clue what that even means. Yep. They have no clue what, what that even means. So I would imagine most men just don't know. Mm. Uh, they've got to they've got to hit a place where it becomes incredibly dramatic. Mm. Something incredibly dramatic probably has to happen to get their attention that something ain't cool right now, or they've done something that isn't cool right mm. now or some, so, and then normally it would just take somebody to, to point it out and invite them to shift and change. Um, uh, so from a male's point of view, yeah. And I know, I know plenty of women who are in the same place. Mm. That, speaking that, of, that speaking complete, of women, completely repeat over and over again, the same old, all things. Um, so yeah, you know, it just takes but the 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 reason why it is so toxic for men and, and men can because there's that deep rooted fear that if somebody held a mirror up to them and asked them to go deep within, mm. it would scare the living crap out of them. Yeah. It's the most it's the most courageous yep. thing that we could do is take an inner journey. And the reason why it's it's the, the warrior and and Rachel uh, uh, said something where Warrior of the Light, which is an amazing book that Paolo Coelho wrote. Oh, interesting. Called Warrior of the Light. I still have it. It's it's, it's an amazing book, and it's great for men to read. Mm. And it's a beautiful book that's about the inner journey. It's the most courageous thing that we could do and the most frightening thing that we could do because of what we're going to see along that way, moving deeper within our heart space and all the wounding that's going to show up, all the trauma that's going to show up. And that's what Rachel means by being the warrior. Do we, it's, it's, do we want to keep on avoiding, avoiding, avoiding and keeping our old habits, patterns, rituals, behaviors continuing. And then we're just stuck in the mud for the rest of our lives. So I want to take a moment here, uh, Jeff. I want to invite our beautiful guest, Rachel Fiore, to kind of break this down. Nancy says, I don't know how much longer I can live with the pain. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful place to heal the pain. You're in the perfect place to actually start to alchemize it, to transform the energy of it. I don't know how much longer I can live with it means it's time to start to love the pain that is there. Because when you were a child or however old you were, when you had that pain created, that is the moment of creation of this pain which needs love, not I can't take you anymore. It's I need to start to love you. And falling in love with the pain means embracing it, pulling it into your heart. And that is going to hurt. 
it is going to hurt. But only seeing the pain or looking at it or knowing it's there is not enough to heal it. What needs it to heal is the power of your love that you're offering that pain as it shows up. And that sometimes means more will come up and that's perfect. That is beautiful because it means you have the opportunity to love yourself. That's what self-love actually means. It means learning how to honor our pain. It was there for a reason, sweetheart. You have that pain for a reason. Something happened. It hurt. It wasn't fair. It was unloving. It was kind. And because of that, there's pain left over. Go in and love that part of you that went through that pain, that trauma, that unloving thing, and honor that pain. Love it. Love it. Pull it into your heart and love it. It has no choice but to start to heal when you offer love to it. Love truly heals all, but that is an energetic thing that most people don't understand. Offer that loving energy and it will start to transmute. So I want to, that's a, that's a beautiful response, Rachel, mm. uh, but I am curious and I'm, I'm sure most of our viewers might be as well. You're a teacher today. You, you have a, a business, you run a, a program called Masters of Self University, I believe. Yeah, that's my, my corporation. Yeah. Okay, so my question to you is, is that you, you, you didn't come out of the womb uh, already healed. <laughs> you probably have had to have gone through some significant experiences in, in your own life to get you to where you are today. I want to ask you, um, for those that may not be familiar with who you are, if they're first time checking, uh, listening to you speak tonight, what was, what was the defining moment in your life when you knew that perhaps maybe for you it was do or die, uh, it was survive or thrive, it was stay weak or become a warrior. Are you willing to share that with us on Real yeah. Mental Health Life tonight? Yeah, absolutely. So I will share first that when um, seven days after I turned five, my biological father died. And mm. from that point forward, very quickly, there was another man in the picture and he became my stepfather. Um, he was bipolar. He was extraordinarily abusive mentally. He was very psychologically abusive, verbally abusive. He was a horrific person mm. and out of control, unpredictable. His bipolar disorder was out of control. And he was a doctor. He was a physician. Mm. So forget getting any help. Doctors. Are you kidding me? That, that, that person, that persona. Right. And so living with that abuse from, you know, five and a half or so on, my first pivotal life defining moment was at 13 when, you know, being abused, constantly told what a piece of shit you are being called a horror before you knew what the word meant. Like I was so young when I was, you know, called all these things, how stupid I was and how incapable, whatever. So there's the abuse every day, all day. I lived in fight, flight or freeze every single day of my life. I never knew what was going to happen. If I was going to get hit this time, I didn't know. And so at 13, I developed the programs but if I just show him how good I am, if I just get another mm. award, if I make sure I get the straight A's, if I get the, you know, every sport that I was, you know, really amazing, I was a good athlete mm. and it was never good enough. So I remember getting a B on my report card and a B meant an F in his eyes. And I was terrified to go home. I didn't know what I was going to do. And so after getting it, of course, I was, you know, screamed at for hours and humiliated and grounded and whatever. I had to get that grade up. I had to get the A. I worked so hard to get it. And when I got the A, I came home with my report card and I just waited and I handed it to him when he came home and I was looking up in his face, just waiting to see that proud face. Like I did it. You did a good job. Nice work, anything. Mm -hmm. And I saw his face change and I knew the look I was about to get it. And you never knew how bad it was going to get. So I just, I froze and here came the fear. Here came that fight, flight or freeze. Oh shit moment. And as he like unleashed this rage, he just was like, this isn't even an A. It's a low A. It doesn't even count you stupid, you know, whatever he started to scream. And I just like left my body. Mm. And it was like, I was behind us looking at us and I had this massive epiphany. Oh my God. This has nothing to do with me, mm. nothing to do with me. Wow. 
These are his programs. No matter how personal it feels, this is not about me. Mm. And it was like a weight just lifted. Mm. And I just kind of smiled a little bit. Now, that was my first shift into spiritual awakening. It didn't make the abuse go away. It didn't make me not want to die year after year of having to put up with this shit. But I knew at that moment, none of it was mine. None of it was mine. And from that day forward, I didn't give a shit if he approved of me or not. I then excelled in sports, worked hard in school, was an advanced college. I did that for me. I did it to show me I could do it. I was good enough to achieve. Or if I didn't do well enough here, that's okay. I would do better next time. Why? For me, I never again did it for him or for anybody else. Hmm. That was one of the, that was the biggest pivotal moment that set me on the path to where I, I am today. At 13? Yeah. I was 13. I'll never forget wow. the day. Wow. Hmm. Uh, Rachel, I, I will say that as, a, as I'm just sitting here listening to you, I, first of all, I got chills. Um, mm -hmm. I feel your pain as your younger self. And that's not easy for someone like me who, who didn't know how to feel anyone's pain, especially my own. Um, what a beautiful story. Thank you. And what I want to share in this moment, first of all, thank you for showing up tonight and for us, for all of us. I, I also, I want to share that what I've learned in my own journey of coming home to myself, to self-love, to return to love, was that it's not about denying those things happen to us. It's just changing our relationship with those things that happen to us. And I think that is the, that is the, the tie in to when we were talking in a prior segment right here, right now around feeling the pain, it's okay. Like for you to even share this part of your, your, your story, because we can't deny this is the truth. And we certainly don't want to live in minimizing it anymore because that's, especially as men, that's what we did. That's what I did. This guy, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> I was always either denying it or minimizing it. And I also did my best to, to try to overcompensate the way you did to become that, you know, that overachiever as you described yourself. Uh, there's just, there's so much depth to what you shared. Well, what a beautiful story. What do you make of that, Josh? What did you hear in that story that hit you right in your soul? Mm, I felt you too. And I felt the, I felt the pain and I'm just left with, um, you, you're, Knowing at 13 just blows my mind. Your ability, what a gift to be able to separate in that moment and see it for what it was. Wow. I'm, I'm still just left with a wow from that, Rachel. And, um, and that, that, was, that was your freedom. That was completely was. your freedom. That set me on a path of freedom. And I want to say, I want to share this. It didn't make the abuse stop, as I mentioned. I mean, it was horrific. And I was in a tremendous amount of pain. I had a lot of inner child wounds to heal, you know, when I went off to college and when I, you know, as an adult and, you know, grew in my 20s, it was, I had a lot of healing to do. But here's the beauty of it. I knew it was mine. My healing mm -hmm. is my responsibility, you know, and I, I remember going off to college because that's the only way I could be set free is the only way I could get out. I have to make sure I go to college, I get an education, I want to take care of myself. And I didn't want to be trapped there. And so when I went off to college and excuse the language, because I'm going to drop an F-bomb, this is what I said. I'm going to keep it real. I went off to college and I said out loud to myself, there is no way I'm not fucked up from this. There's no way. It's impossible for me to not be fucked up from what I experienced since five and a half years old to 18. There's no way. And I made a vow to myself that no matter what, I didn't care how long it took, I was going to spend every day of my lifetime healing myself so that I wouldn't turn into a monster that he was 
how he treated mm. me. I didn't want to do that to another human being. Mm. And the only way to not do that is to focus on my own healing and elevating myself. And that was my focus from that point forward. So mm. in that moment, you made a conscious choice, if I may paraphrase what I just heard you say, mm -hmm. is that you were not going to live in victim mentality of victimhood. Never. You, you knew that you were you had more potential. You knew that you were worthy of more than that. And your, your mantra became not here, not now, not today. I want freedom. I want to be, I want to be free to, to love myself and no longer needing the approval from, from my father. Yeah. It was never, I was never going to live as a victim. It was never yeah. going to be a poor me. It was going to be, what did I learn from that? What was for me? Not poor me. Something here was for me. I don't know what the F it is. I didn't have a clue at the time. I sure didn't know, but I was, I made a vow to myself to make sure I healed myself because I just, you know, being treated that way. And when you at 16, it was just, you know, I, I would rather be dead than continue to have to put up with this every day. I can't live like this anymore. And it's that mm -hmm. I don't want to be someone that makes another person feel that way mm -hmm. because I'm the monster. And so I might not know how I messed up, but I'm not going to stop finding out what is in here inside of Rachel. And then I'm going to heal whatever's in there. I don't care how ugly. I don't care how scary. I'm going in, I'm finding it, and I am going to find out a way to heal it. And that's, that's my whole adult life has been devoted to that. Beautiful. I want to mm -hmm. shift gears here. One of our viewers mm -hmm. uh, I've asked, uh, put a couple of questions out here, and she's asking the relationship between physical pain and is there a relationship between physical pain that comes from either an injury or comes from a medical condition, which she did not say, but I know that there is a medical condition tied into that into that question, um, not only for herself, but for all of us, we've all either gone through a medical crisis, a medical diagnosis, and or some type of physical injury. What is the, is there um, a connection or an, an attachment to the emotional wounding and shadows that we've been living in? You, you, you're shaking your head yes, so that's a yes. yes. Tell us more. And how can we, how can we embrace that type of pain uh, to actually help activate the healing process on a physical level, whether it be from an injury or a medical condition. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start off and I'll let anybody share as well that um, almost, almost always without a doubt that those things are happening, your emotional pain, your unhealed stuff manifests in the physical. There's no separation of energy. Like everything is energy. Mm. Emotional pain is energy. Old unhealed traumas is energy. Your body is energy. They're all one. And mm -hmm. so over time, when that's trapped in there for too long, it has no choice but to manifest. It's tearing the body up. It's mm -hmm. too much work for the body to hold on to that dark, ugly pain instead of being able to function crystal clear in that more elevated energy. So it's it's going in and, and I usually teach people, you know, the process that I teach as a coach or at Masters of Self University, we teach the step-by-step -step process to go inside of the pain and transform that energy. It's nothing but energy. Pain is just energy. So it's going in and learning how to love and transform it in a very, very loving, nurturing way. And then it doesn't stay in the body. Mm -hmm. If there is an injury or something else going on where you also need other treatment simultaneously, that's fine. But physical pain, you treat, this is hard, but physical pain, you treat the same way. It's you bring love to it, not, oh my God, go away. If anybody said, ew, I don't like you, go away, that would not feel loving. It's not loving to your body either. It's not loving to any aspect of yourself. I don't like you, go away, once you're gone. Instead of, hi, welcome. I'm so sorry you're in pain. Let me bring some love to you. What can mm -hmm. I do to make you feel loved and nurtured right now? And mm -hmm. that's talking to yourself, every aspect of yourself, including your physical body. That's where you start. I love, I love, I love, that. Mm. love that, Rachel. Go ahead, Ev. Yeah, no, I love, I love what we're talking about here. And you know, obviously, I've got my tag name on here, Evis Love. But you know, one question I've asked to uh, you know um, the brothers in the past on the panel, sister. You know, many of us 
through our lives, you know, we, we really have a definition of love equals pain. Yeah. And we're talking about bringing love to these parts that need love. Mm -hmm. What are some of the healthy coping mechanisms? What are some of the tools that you've been able to use successfully with your clients to help them understand, understand and understand how they can transmute and alchemize that pain into love? I think first is understanding the definition of what love is. It's not a feeling. It's a way of being. <laughs> can you repeat that uh -huh. uh, we, love? we talked about that a couple of shows ago <laughs> did you oh love? yeah let uh, it go I, jeff I, let it go man let go it ahead go. No, love, go? love is not oh, a feeling okay. it's a way of being love is a way of being it's not some feeling you have inside of you it's a way of being how do i show up for my pain it doesn't mean i don't feel pain it means I am going to love and nurture it while it's there. It is there for a reason. That's part of honoring ourselves. And it doesn't mean you drown in your pain. That's how you actually alchemize it. So just to briefly answer, and then I'd love to hear from Jeff, um, is the tools I teach people when they come to our, our coaching programs and for the, um, the mystical life coaches that I certify, I teach them to throw every single tool they've ever learned away in the trash, put it in the toilet and flush. I get rid of all tools. You know why? Your divine power is the only thing you ever need in life because no matter what, you always will have you. If you're stranded in a desert, you will have you. You might not have another tool, but you will always have you and your divinity. And so I teach people the step-by-step -step process to go inside and connect to their true source of power that is what alchemizes the pain, the traumas, the programs, everything by the power of you. That's part of what we teach and how deep we go. Mm. Let me mm. ask you this, Rachel. What, what if uh, some of our viewers um, don't have, they're not religious or they don't have a, they're not, they don't embrace spirituality in their life. Is it, is it make it more difficult to go through this process you're describing or is it just the same? No, it's okay. You're perfect as you are. Wherever, whatever you come with, you are perfect as you are is fine. Mm -hmm. Because all you have to do is be willing to go in and sit for a couple of seconds and feel what it is that we guide you through. We don't have mm -hmm. to say anything spiritual. I don't say anything religious almost ever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You're perfect mm -hmm. as you are. You mm -hmm. still have mental programs running that were created when you were two or seven. So mental programs is how we start. What are the mental programs running? And let's learn how to just change the mental program energy. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a feeling, even if it's just agitation or anger. That's the language we use. Mental programs, emotional programs, behavioral programs, and then inner child wounds. You don't have to say anything woo-woo if you don't want to. That is perfect. You are perfect as you are. It's a perfect mm -hmm. place to start. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Pachana, what are you making of all this tonight? Wow. Uh, well, the first thing I wanted to say, we're talking. I think the the ongoing word tonight is pain. Mm. And the the thing for me, the most important thing to do, resistance causes pain. Yes. Resistance causes pain. So here's the thing: um, pain is just caused because we're resisting our feelings. If I'm in pain. I'm, there's something that I'm feeling inside. So going back to all of this and what Rachel was saying in a different way, and I've said this on the show many times, our feelings have energy attached to them. And if we are repressing and suppressing our feelings because we don't like the feeling I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. And we've been programmed that the only feeling we're supposed to be feeling is joy. Well, that's bullshit. And I've said that many times on this show. Mm -hmm. But we're, if we resist, suppress, and repress our feelings, that is going to um, eventually cause us an immeasurable amount of pain in every single moment. And then because we suppress and repress all of those feelings, which has energy attached to it, it's perfect. 
when you're watching the television show and you start laughing your ass off, you're moving energy, folks. You're feeling something. It's making you feel. When you feel, see something and you begin to cry watching a movie, you're moving energy. So this energy that is attached to all of these feelings, if we suppress it and repress it, eventually it's going to cause physical dis-ease. It's just going to happen because, as Rachel said, we're, it, we're, we're stuffing it and stuffing it and stuffing it, and eventually our bodies are going to go, whoa, we've got to release it somehow, so we're going to cause this physical dis-ease. Yep. But it's this journey within that we're doing that will allow us to begin to feel all of those feelings that have been stuffed ever since maybe we're five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old. And then through the inner journey, all of that starts to come up and begin to release. And when we start to release it, it shifts and changes, or as Rachel says, alchemizes ourselves. So pain for me, is the resistance to feelings. It's simply a resistance to feelings. But one thing I wanted to bring up really quick that we talked about in our production meeting, what we're talking about here, folks, is the work. And we've been talking this for a hundred shows, the inner work that is most important to do. The commitment, the question I have is, if you're really and truly committed to yourself, to go within and continually go within for the rest of your life, because it's about, always about holding up a mirror. It's not about running to the next three day intensive. It's not about running to mm -hmm. the next um, master class. You, you, all of that is are wonderful supplements <laughs> to your committed inner journey. And it's about <laughs> moving within and really looking at that, and, and that is the warrior. The warrior is I'm ready now to look at everything within me that's going to come up, and with the guidance of Rachel, the guidance of Evis, the guidance of Josh, the guidance of Jay, standing right next to us, holding a safe place yes. for us, we can do this. Love that. Love that. Fasana, you're on fire, man. Yes. <laughs> you're on fire. I want to I wanna take a moment here as we're approaching 45 minutes into the hour coming up. Rachel, uh, Jeff just hit on something, and I, I want to take us in another direction, piggybacking what he said about supplementation. Right now in 2022, psychedelics is, has become a very, very popular gateway for many people. Um as part of their the healing journey. What is your personal perspective on psychedelics? Is it, is it, is, well, I don't want, I don't need to feed you the language. Go ahead. Tell us what you think about it. Does it work? And how can it be, um, how can it be utilized or enhanced in a healing journey in a healthy way? I think that it can be a beautiful tool. It can be a beautiful tool. What I receive as a channel when I'm guided with people who come and ask, oh, I want to do this or I want to do that. I usually tell them, you do the deep, dark work first. Mm -hmm. You learn how to step into your divine power first. You learn that you are actually capable of processing your own pain, your traumas, your unhealed stuff, your programs. And when you can do that work and make progress there and start to set yourself free, if you want to add in a supportive tool to enhance what you as a divine being are already capable of doing and are doing, that's when you're going to get the benefit of what, say, plant medicine is actually meant for. When it's used in a responsible therapeutic way, I think it is beautiful. I think the problem is most people out there use it in a very irresponsible way. If you're on your 10th ayahuasca ceremony, for example, this month, you're a drug addict. You're not in plant. That's not plant medicine. There's a difference. There's a difference. And we need to get real and call ourselves out on this crap because all we're doing is more damage over time by using, oh, that's gonna heal me, that's gonna heal me, uh-uh. Learn how to heal yourself and then in that journey, anything else you add in as a supportive tool will only enhance what your divinity is already doing. When we do it in that way, I think those tools, no matter what it is, wilderness retreats, master classes, anything, plant medicine, 
beautiful. They're there to enhance and help, not to do the work for you. So if I, I may love paraphrase. that, and I, I wanted to go there so bad too, and to piggyback on you too, Jeff, was that because I did it. I did all the courses. I did a three-year massive intensive multi-days every other month for three solid years. I read all the books. I did all the things. If we're looking outside of ourselves for the answers, either through and, – and I've done it with mushrooms too. I've, I've gone into mushrooms saying that I'm going to find the answer here. Mm -hmm. The answers don't come from outside of us ever. No. Ever. Ever. And I spent the better part of my, actually all of my 30s and my late 20s looking for the answers from the next person, the next book, the next thing, the next drug, the next something outside of myself. And I never, ever found it and spent a whole lot of money and effort trying. It's never outside of ourselves. And what you said earlier, Rachel, was so beautiful and so simple, and I didn't want it to get skipped over, was that the answers are in us. We yeah. have the power to do this mm -hmm. work ourselves. Yeah. And that's what absolutely changed my life completely, a thousand percent, was taking back my own control and knowing that I had the power to do this work and to do it myself and trusting in that and trusting in me. Oh, beautiful. Trusting that the answers were in me. And then if I just created enough stillness, balance, uh, self-love and truly turned in, the answers will emerge. We don't need all of that stuff. It's already in us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that. Josh, I want to, I want to ask you, uh, take a nice deep breath for us off. Yeah, man. And, um, what just bubbled up for you? You clearly you got emotional and I love that. And I'm curious, what's, what's, on, what's at the bottom of that? What, what, was, what brought that up? What are you, what are you feeling right now in this moment? I spent so many years and so much money handing my power over to somebody mm -hmm. or something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I truly, truly, truly believed with every fiber of my being that I needed someone or something else to heal me and that I was broken and I was damaged and they had the answers and I did not. That's why I get emotional and I'm going to get it again because we have it. Nobody has the answers for us. We have it. Hmm. Hey, Josh. And it Beautiful, takes Josh. a little bit of courage, a little, a tiny bit of courage. Hmm. And that's it. But stop looking outside because hmm. you're wasting your time and your money and your energy. Hmm. Hey, Josh. Hmm. I love you, man. Yeah, hmm. brother. You, you, make, you make it easy. Let me tell you something. I, what I'm feeling coming forward from you is that you finally awakened to the fact that you had something beyond power. Knowledge is the power. But what you tapped into was something you didn't know you had. I didn't know I had ever. I didn't know I had it until I hit my threshold of pain was so deep. I was hours from death back when I was 54 years old, just a, a few seven years ago. And what I've learned is that I had something way more powerful than power. I had something called superpowers. We mm. all have that within us. But what we weren't taught in our homes was how to tap into that. Mm. Exactly. And that is what we are. That is what we are all. I don't want to say promoting or marketing. That's not what we do here. <clears throat> but it's what we live in. We live. We have all experienced our own superpowers and it's a superpowers that is actually is the gateway to bringing us back home mm. to the true essence of who we were born to be. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that, Rachel Fiore? Oh, I love it. This is you. I love it. And Josh, you're beautiful. 
and you're amazing for discovering the power that you are. Mm. And you are just illuminating because of it. You are shining mm. such a beautiful warrior, loving light. And thank mm. you for doing the work on yourself. It's amazing. Mm. I want to applaud you for that first. Mm. Uh, well, mm. no, no applaud needed. It was, it was just what I needed to get to wake up. Mm. And we can that's all do wonderful. it. And that's, yes. that's why I'm so passionate about it. And that's why I do get worked up mm. is because we all have this. Mm. And we can all, exactly. we, can, we can do it. You know, what's most important is to find someone, if, if you're really intent and want to make this commitment to yourself to move within, release, and grow, is to find someone who is simply going to hold that space for you that, mm -hmm. that knows how to allow you to move within. And it just mm -hmm. supports and guides you to do that on your path and holds that space and knows when all of the stuff is coming up to allow it to come up. Mm -hmm. What we're really doing, the best people to work with are those people who are facilitators, not exactly. teachers. Mm -hmm. There you go. We can teach exactly. the, the and, and I've said this on the show so many times. It's about nurturing first. Yes. Mm. Having that ability to nurture first, not to get rid of anything, but to nurture whatever is going on within you. Because when that person can help you nurture that, then we can do it on our own. So it's mm -hmm. about being a facilitator to nurture first and then teach later. Beautiful. Well, the, the facilitation from my perspective, Jeff, comes from if you haven't done the work, then you're just a teacher. Then you're just working from, from a book, something you were taught. But until you have actually put those shoes on and walked in the pain with those shoes on, now, now you, have, you have value that you could bring. Well, I, well, I spent 21 years working with therapists and I never, I was never with a facilitator and I never ever had any tough love shared with me. I know was never called out and I was never guided home mm. because these were not facilitators. These were therapists and there probably are some good therapists out there. I just didn't meet them. And I, I worked with probably six or seven over 21 years. Hmm. And the other piece of that is, from my perspective, I realized this when I was deep into a, a, a coaching session not that long ago, because a couple 24 hours ago, was for me at least the way I show up is my intention is to reach you at your soul level. I am not in this to, to preach or, or teach you. I'm in this to reach you and connect with you at your soul level. Because that is where the healing needs to take place. Exactly. We can reach you at the soul level. We have infinite possibilities for healing. Mm -hmm. we're, you, moving, you we're moving from where from inspirational teachers to transformational messengers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love that. And the guide, the facilitator in that is somebody who is teaching you what self-empowerment means. They are always guiding you back to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the key. It isn't finding people out there that are going to give you solutions and tasks and here's how you schedule your day. And here's how you're <laughs> going to reach this goal. People come to me and my programs or they come. This, this is fantastic. Uh, in my mystical life, cert, I certify coaches in, in this work and the work that I do and the work that you know, similar to all of what you offer. And it's a, a struggle for some of them to go, but I need you to put it in an outline. But I'm like, nope, nope. I'm like, <laughs> no, guess what the answer is to that? No, get out of your minds. Get away from knowledge. Knowledge is not the same as wisdom. Wisdom comes from the heart and the soul. And oh. that's where you're learning how to guide people back to their heart and soul. It's empowerment getting mm -hmm. them to see, to go within, to reach their level, to connect to their own divine power. That's where wisdom starts to flow through and guide you in your life. Not mm -hmm. what you read in a book. Yeah. I left Western medicine because of how Western medicine was in the United mm -hmm. States. 
And I started my own corporation and my own coaching programs because I was like, this is bullshit. People have the power to heal themselves from almost anything. So let's start teaching people how to heal. And what I was always told when I worked in the hospital system was, Rachel, but sick people make us money. You need to just sit down and be quiet and stop this nonsense. Sick mm. people make us money, Rachel. And I knew right then and there I had to get out, I had to leave, and I had to start my own thing so I could teach people what self-empowerment actually is. The power that they truly have is within. You just need the right guide to show you how to get there, not to give you answers and solutions and tasks and checklists. That's a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. Beautiful. Mm. Rachel, as we approach the hour, six minutes from the hour or under, Ooh, I want to fast. take a moment here to, uh, we could probably do another hour. We haven't really even tapped into, we haven't gone down, we've gone down a rabbit hole, but we can always go deeper. I know that, <laughs> uh, which means that there will always be an opportunity to, uh, I say, yes, Rachel, you are always invited back in the future, perhaps maybe later in this year or early next year. When, uh, when we're called to, or when you're called to, you're welcome to reach out to us. But in this moment, I do want to give you the opportunity to share with our community, a Real Men, Real Talk Live community, that you, in fact, have a program coming up very shortly. And I'd like you to take a few minutes here to, to share a little bit about what this program is. I'm also setting it up on a banner on the bottom of our screen for those that are interested to learn some more. It is called The Divine Heart of Man. And it is an eight-week transformational healing for evolving men with you that's coming up in May. Can you share with us just real briefly a little bit about what the intention of this program is and why someone should consider looking into it or saying, yes, I'm in? Absolutely. And thank you for this. The divine heart of man is really connecting to your heart and letting everything else heal and alchemize. Everything we've talked about this evening is in the divine heart of man. It guides you back to yourself so you can learn what it means, what it feels like, and how, step by step, how to actually go in and heal everything in there that you would like to heal within yourself that you're still stuck in. It's teaching you how to do it for yourself and our certified mystical life coaches. Some these men I'm with tonight are some of the most amazing men in the entire planet. I love you. I think you're all wonderful. And I can tell you that there are incredible, amazing men that are now certified mystical coaches in this work that will guide you through this level of work and teach you while they have the spaciousness for you to move through pain and old traumas or wherever you're stuck. They also guide you and teach you how to do it for yourself. You come out of that empowered, healed, and how to spend the rest of your life knowing that if you get triggered or if something negative happens or painful, you know exactly how to go in and transform it in the present moment. Those are the skills you walk away from. We're here to empower, not create codependency. Love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. There was, a, there, there was an interesting question. Uh, someone just asked out there, Jay, is it just for men, sister? This particular program is just for men. Yep. It is just for men. This one is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if people want to get hold of you, what's the best way to, for them to reach you? Is that mastersofselfuniversity.com? You got it. Go to mastersofselfuniversity.com. Okay. Beautiful. I want to do in this moment here, uh, since you have joined us for our 100th episode, I'm going to put each one of my co-hosts that have been, how do I put this? Absolutely amazing in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea when I invited you to join me, how you would impact me mm -hmm. and my own life. But I would like to invite you just to take a moment here, maybe a minute each, just to kind of share what has being, uh, what has changed in your life? What has being part of Real Men Real Talk Live? What has it done for you in your own life? Uh, Ev, since you're mm -hmm. since you're at the top, we'll invite you to to kick us off in this moment here. Yeah, I think one of the most beautiful things for me, brother, and I won't take too long, is is the fact that even though we could be on the other side of the pond and you know hundreds and thousands of meters away, so to speak, or yards, as you guys might call it we still have a beautiful connection. And for many men out there, you know, they, they, they're really doing it tough. Um, they don't have these particular connections that they can find and revere with other men that they trust. 
So I'm just going to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on the show, my brother, and um, my brothers, I should say, mm. but also for our sister coming on tonight and for any men out there and, look, any sisters as well, but the brothers in particular, because I help a lot of men, you know, if you're looking to get help, you know, you've, you, you've heard what the sister's talking about tonight uh, with her Divine Heart of Man uh, workshop or something that else that you feel like you're being called to, really reach out and find that support because we really are in an opportunity to start living out our best life and be able to walk through some of these shadows that we call mm. our weakness to walk into that warrior of light that we're talking about tonight. So, Jay the Roth man, thank you, thank you, thank you, my brother. Mm. Mm. Got it. Jeff Asana, you're up. Mm. What is what has this show done for you and how has it impacted your own life? That I'm not alone. Mm. Whenever um, something comes up, I eat, I'll, leave, I'll really be honest. Something right before we got into the green room together, I got a message from somebody I photographed four years ago. And it, it hit me of, of what this person said. But this show tonight, I've just moved Pat through it. I'll, it, it. I've learned so much from you guys. Uh, but what I cherish the most is, yeah, we could do that inner work and we could stand on our own. But sometimes we just hit friggin' blind spots. Mm. And what mm. I've really realized is through this soul connection that, that the four of us have, that we're there for each other. And yeah. I know that I can, if I hit a blind spot, as much work that I have done, as much inner work that I've done for over 20 years and all the tools that I have, I'm still going to hit a damn blind spot. Mm. And when I hit that mm. blind spot, I know where I can go. Beautiful. And that is really important of what we're demonstrating here as creating new models in our life. What we're intending to do here is, is create, be new models for men. And what I've realized is boy man <laughs> a lot of our audience knows a lot of my stuff but i just know from this show <laughs> um that i'm not alone yeah. i can call mm -hmm. jay i can i can evis and i have had long conversations josh mm -hmm. and and we've been there for each other and that's the most important thing folks is have that community that when you're in the shadow and you and you don't know where to go even as much work as you've done you're not alone and you don't have to always do it alone beautiful i, I just want to take a moment here jeff uh, <clears throat> i don't know if we were if anyone was keeping a scorecard as as to which man showed up in a feminine divine in a moment when i say that meaning uh, giving ourselves permission to, to show vulnerability and literally literally strip bare naked uh, removing the armor so that we can have a spontaneous moment of healing. You by far are at the top. You have really shown up. You have been, you have been the man that I wanted to be part of this journey with me. Mm -hmm. uh, you have done it so well. You have done it no matter what. You, my friend, have shown up with dignity and grace week in and week out, even when you were even when you didn't want to, even when you were angry, even when you were pissed off, even when you were in pain, you showed mm -hmm. up. And through that process, you had spontaneous moments of breakthrough healing. And I will forever cherish each one of those moments mm -hmm. that you touched my life. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Beautiful, brother. <laughs> Josh, you're up, man. What do you got to say? How is this show impacting mm -hmm. your life? This love right here that we're all feeling, this is the space. This is the fertile ground. This is where we grow. It's through you gentlemen that over the last 100 weeks, I've grown so much. Hmm. And it's because it's safe here to do so. It's safe to show my heart. 
it's safe to show my feelings and out there it's not mm. and so yeah everybody if you can give yourself this opportunity of loving people in your life and it takes it takes one to do it first jay and that was you mm -hmm. to give us all permission that we can show up here wildly vulnerable crying week over week bearing our naked souls to the world like you said jeff so beautifully does this space becomes special and it becomes healthy and this soil becomes immensely fertile for growth and we can show up for ourselves mm. in this soil and grow hugely and i've um I'm eternally grateful for what the show has done for me. And I see <laughs> we originally showed up to help a bunch of dudes and <laughs> ended up doing some pretty cool shit for myself. So, mm -hmm. and that's through you guys' love and support. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. a huge, huge thank you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm. Beautiful, brother. Mm. Rachel, you're on a hot seat right now. Yeah, <laughs> I've been crying that whole time. <laughs> Welcome what to it, Real Men, Real Talk Live, sister. <laughs> <laughs> what has this show done for you? It's allowed me to have a newer, deeper level of hope that for men to heal themselves because there are more seeing men like you who have done the real work and continue to do what I call the real work, that deep inner transformational, painful, challenging warriors work. It's seeing you um, allows me to just share my love for every one of you. I am so grateful and appreciative that you show up as role models for men and women, both. I don't want to exclude women, um, mm -hmm. but it's very challenging to find um, men who are brave and vulnerable and help other men heal and not only focus on solution, solution, strategy, strategy, instead of getting right to the raw shit and doing the real work. Mm -hmm. So I honor every one of you. I honor everybody mm -hmm. that is doing the real work out there, man or woman. It is not easy. You are doing it. Keep going. Reach out for the help who can guide you back to yourself and as long as you do that, keep watching the show because it's amazing. And thank you for having it. Thank you for mm. having me on it as well. Mm. It's been a pleasure to have you, Rachel. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. You know, originally yeah. you were supposed to be here next week. And when we met in a production meeting with you last week or so ago, it came to me. I got a download from uh, Source and Source said to me, wait a minute. Why not invite Rachel to join us for a hundredth episode? if you're available and you made it work. And uh, so I want to take a moment to thank you. It takes courage for a woman to step into, into this platform um, because we, we, we come in with our own past stories around that may, there may be some shadows and some intimidation and some apprehension. And our role uh, in, this, in this program is to create a safe space for you so that you could show up and show up as vulnerable and as your authentic self as you are capable of in a moment. And so thank you for showing up tonight and um, taking this moment to hold space with us as we honor, not us, but the platform and the show that we have created, not knowing where it was going to go. And my closing thoughts as we are a little bit over this evening, I'm giving us permission to do just that <laughs> is, uh, The intention was to touch other people's lives. I didn't know, like Josh shared, that our lives would be touched through this experience. Mm. Relationships outside of ourselves, due to this platform, due to this show, have evolved. I can speak for myself that um, there's been massive healing that's taken place. My mom is one of my consistent viewers and fans. And the show, the topics have been a gateway for us to have some massive healing 
that hadn't taken place prior to us launching Real Men Real Talk. And that for me may in fact be the greatest gift for myself that I received. And I didn't go mm -hmm. in it with any motive. I didn't go in it with any uh, expectations. All I, all I came in with it was just trusting because this wasn't my idea. This came from God. And I just trusted that um, it was going to, it, it was going to unfold exactly as it should. And as you said, Rachel, when you go live, you don't have a script. You don't speak from your head. You channel it from source from within. And that's how we show up on Real Men Real Talk Live. We don't do research before we go into a topic. We just speak from our own experiences of having navigated through it or as we are in it, going through the dark nights of the soul, sometimes live. It's happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so... Um, I want to thank all of you that have found value and have continued to show up week after week as we have consistently on Real Men Real Talk Live. I love all of you. I thank you for joining us on this, this healing journey together. May you continue to have the strength to... Mm. to believe and know how powerful you are mm. and that you have infinite possibilities to heal mind, body, and soul. Let 2022 be this year where you rise above the words you have spoken, the thoughts you have believed and say, not here, not now in 2022. Let this be the year of infinite possibilities for you for healing. And with that, I love you all. We'll catch you next week on Real Men, Real Talk, live. Thank you, Risa. We love you, girl. <laughs>